Hello oh guys, got a 6430 John Deere here and it's having steering problems. Steering gets stiff on it. We got a gauge hooked up to our steering priority circuit right here. We're going to see what our load sense is when it does screw up. And then when we get there, we'll go back over here to our system pressure check over here and see what we got there. I got a feeling we got a pump going bad on it. Oh. This old girl has got some serious blow by and knocks and bangs. It ain't long for the world. I think the steering is the least of their problems. And then the starter won't. The starter won't kick out. Listen to that some bitch. Wow. So basically, on a pressure flow compensated system. Load sense pressure should always match your system pressure. So let's get her wound up and see what her load sense pressure is. Turn a little hard left. Look at that, she just fell on her face. What the hell happened there? She just kind of quits. I think we've got a priority valve or something going bad here. Remember your load sense, that's what's going to stroke your pressure compensator on your pump. See now the steering's real stiff on it. Only getting 1100 PSI. and worse and worse too. How about a thousand PSI is all I can get out of it now. Now let's go down to idle here. I can't even get a hundred PSI out of it. Now I think we need to go see what our system pressure is and what we'll have to do to get a load stick signal back to the pump is run a remote or something and see if anything changes there. Let's see if the front hitch will raise up. Oh, I would say we lost the pump. It won't even raise the front hitch up. I would say the pump took a giant shit. Let's go check system pressure. Or we're not getting the load sense signal back to the pump. We have something going on with the priority valve. Bypassing all the oil. Man, that thing there, there's something going on because I think our pump might have taken a dump. That discharge line feeding that priority block is hot as a pistol. And the pump is down in there. A lot of guys will pull a cab. I'll, what I will do is I'll take this implement off the back and pull the rock shaft housing and the uh, remote valve box off, jerk it off of there, and away we go. All right, let's fire it back up. All right, let's see if the back hitch will raise up. Won't raise the back hitch up. So give her some throttle. It'll raise it up. All I'm getting is a thousand psi. And I think we lost the pump. Let's 
lower that back down. Well, I guess I'll get on the phone and uh, call the powers that be and see what they want to do. I got a feeling we're going to be pulling the pump out of her. You know, if it was just a steering that was screwed up, then yeah, you know, but everything is. I mean, the front and rear hitch won't raise up on it. The steering won't work on it. So, more than likely that pump, and it looks like it's been changed once already. Well, call them guys. But look at all the iron now sitting out here. We'll walk out here and I'll show you guys what a strawberry digger looks like. I can go find my damn dogs that are wandering around over here anyway. These are more, these are Kilby bin carriers. Whole fleet of, fleet of equipment out here. I don't want them too much ran off to. Oh, I see him way down there by that spruce tree down there. Come on! Duke! Daisy! Come on! Let's go! Been cooped up in the shop for a couple days. Line them out and they want to go ape shit. Here's a strawberry digger right here. No. Oh. But no, your uh, bins will offload here. These guys actually manhandle these bins, they throw them up here. And uh, what happens is this chain here will run that bin back. And the plants come through this conveyor and then they offload them right there. One guy sits back here and runs this valve block here. Here's a bunch of flow controls. More flow controls. I'll show you what all them flow controls are for. If you want to see some hydraulic motors. These are all hydraulic motors that run all these star wheels. All the way up in there, these are all star wheels. The front sections, they used to be all steel and aluminum, but they they, they finally went to these plastic ones, way cheaper, way cheaper. Those aluminum star wheels used to be about 30, 40 bucks a piece. And if you got in the field with some rocks and it, it would just eat them. Well, I see the sections. This one's got a, the top section's aluminum. So they're still using some aluminum ones, but I see they've changed all these to that new hard plastic. Yeah, let's see how many hydraulic motors here. They're all running series too. And what I mean by series, you know, the first one feeds this one, this one feeds this one, and so on and so forth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 hydraulic motors on this machine. Oh, something else, isn't it, guys? Yeah, this is what they call a star wheel digger. They make trommel diggers too. They have a big basket on them and tines inside that bask, basket that the plants, the whole, the whole purpose is getting the dirt off the plants. You want the plants clean when they come out of the field. These are all, you know, built, this is built by their fabricator down there. All the strawberry stuff is mostly built by the guys that own the nurseries. It's all specialty equipment. And you want to see a mower. See they let one section folded up on it two sections folded up on it this is a mower I don't know what this thing's got to be 48 feet or something like that it's pretty wild I get all the drive lines and shit on this mower that's what they chop the plants with they'll make a big pass and then all these strawberry diggers or these tractors will go out there and start digging it's a Schulte mower 
you gotta have at least an 8000 series to pull that thing you ain't gonna pull that with a 7000 it won't run it well back to the old 6430 I can go over here and call these guys and tell them I think we're gonna need to pump but I'd like to get it off and look take the pump apart and look at it first but I'll be back here when I get a, a word from those guys. Well, we're waiting on them guys. Uh, they're gonna road that tractor in here. If they rev it up, it'll steer and do what it's, uh, it'll, it'll, it should get here. But while I'm waiting on that, I'll show you what else I've been up to. Um, <laughs> this old guy brought this thing. This thing's been here for a long time, but he decide, finally decided that he he wanted to go ahead and pull the trigger and get after it and get her done. And he had bought this power unit, this hydraulic power unit. And when he bought that, I asked him, I said, how many gallons per minute flow do you got there on that pump? And he says, oh, I think it's 10. I said, are you sure about that? Well, it ain't 10. Um, basically, I got everything. Uh, I got my cylinders for my head catch here, the head gate mounted. Uh, I just kind of tied into the linkage that was already in here took the handles off and if you use air I air checked them man it slams it shut because you want the head catch on these squeeze shoots to be quick uh, and I can tell you there ain't enough flow on that it ain't quick anyway uh, everything's operational it runs the squeeze here and then I got this thing here this I knew this was gonna be the hard one to do is the back gate but I got it, I got it, uh, I was having trouble getting that cylinder to clear the tubing to shove the gate over because the cylinder, look how close it is. I mean, it's close. I had to do a little, oh, a little shim in here. I had to shim this out to where my eye was over to one side. I used some thinner strap here to kind of where I could figure out how I could shim, shim that over to where it would, wouldn't, you know, and then it can't walk the other way. Is what I ended up doing. But got all my hydraulic hoses made, and I'm waiting on him now. Uh, I told him I says he wanted to go the electric route, and I don't blame him because it's quieter, and you don't have to sit there while you're working your cows. You don't have to sit there and listen to that noisy damn motor run up there on top of the squeeze chute all day long. But right now we're in a time crunch now, and we're. I told him, I says, you know what we ought to do? I says, I know you want to go the gas route, but here's what we're going to do. Um, I said, I know he's got a bunch of wheel lines with Briggs and Stratton's and Honda Motors. I said, go over there and get a Briggs and Stratton wheel line mover engine, about a 13 horse motor or whatever, 11 horse engine, whatever's on them. I says, we'll weld another plate up here. Right here, we're going to weld another plate gonna mount our engine and I'll have to make a bracket for the pump because I know these pumps these pumps that come off them wheel lines were six gallons a minute and that will triple our speed because that's what those salt creek you know those salt creek sque squeeze chutes and stuff have all of them they got Hondas with wheel line mover pumps on them is what they've got so I, I went out and looked at one the other this morning actually because this one was going so slow I was curious as to what they had on them and I went out there and looked at it and that's all it had was a wheel line mover pump and I said well shit we can do that so what we're gonna do is mount that here and make a bracket to mount our pump with a rubber coupler that runs our pump drive and then what we'll end up doing is we're gonna take this reservoir and we're gonna use it for the reservoir for that pump we'll just leave this here where it's at there's a big drain plug in the bottom of this housing in the reservoir and we'll just plumb right into that drain for a suction line we'll put a suction line coming from there over to here to our pump and then our discharge is going to come out and feed this valve block right here for the PU or pressures is and this valve block's got a relief valve in it so that should take care of our relief so when there's no demand on it means it's a gear pump it should go, you know, this is an open center hydraulic system. Uh, when there's no demand, this relief should lift and let everything go back to tank through the through the T line here. So I'm waiting on him to get back. He went to go rob him a wheel line mover engine. 
and uh, once he gets back I'll figure out what kind of plate I'm gonna need and and all that and we'll see if we can get this thing done tonight and get him get him to where he can start working his cows so this thing wasn't really actually that hard to do I mean to convert it over I mean he's gonna have way 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 less into it than what they wanted for uh golly they want a lot of money for them for them hydraulic squeeze chutes it's god I think they're like 20 grand or something like that I mean it's pretty crazy we're probably gonna have no, with my time, I'll have a couple thousand dollars worth of labor. Um, he'll probably have, probably with the hoses and the valve body and the steel and, oh, you know, he's probably going to have probably five, five, six thousand bucks into it. And I think it's going to work just fine. I mean, if we can get our flow up and get these things to operate a lot faster, that's going to be the, that's going to be uh you know what's going to take a little effort uh the gates and the, the actual functionality of the cylinders and everything that works just fine there's no problem there at all uh i went out and looked at theirs before i started retrofitting this one over and i i looked and i said shit that ain't that hard to do i mean that this setup here basically that's kind of what they're doing out there with the head gate same damn thing you know they're just they just got a cross linkage here running the other gate and they just tied into this one with a pivot you know to run the run that and that's all they did on those twenty thousand dollar ones too so well it looks like he's here with our motor well guys i've got a uh, piece of tubing in here i got a, for a cross brace for the plate i'm going to mount the engine on i'm going to tack it on this side and then square it up and tap it around uh got her cut to fit though fits pretty good um let's see here oh this welder here i just acquired this the other day um old farmer there i, I what i always use before because I've, I've only been in business for myself for five years and i've been acquiring stuff a little bit as i go you know i i've always welded a whole lot with the stick welder i'm fairly decent with the stick welder and and uh then i acquired a, a lincoln ln25 suitcase welder that i used to do a lot of pipe fabrication out in the fields with all these pump station manifolds and stuff and that and i used the 045 flux cord wire and i loved it i mean that I, I love that welder that thing welds so nice even with flux cord it just welds beautiful um but anyway this thing here i had an esab plasma cutter one time and to be completely honest with you it was a fairly decent plasma cutter it ain't near as good as the hypertherm one that I've got now I love that thing but it, it, it kind of would whip that ESAB plasma cutter but you know that was back when I the plasma cutters were pretty much in their infancy you know they were pretty new out when I got that ESAB plasma cutter and I, I used it for a lot of years the bad thing about it is it ate consumables really bad I mean tips and electrodes god it just ate them that thing there I hardly ever change electrodes in it uh, but no, this thing was brand new. Pretty much brand new. It's not brand new, but I guess this, this farmer, his brother had bought it brand new and welded like two times with it and never used it again. And then he died and it was sitting in there. It still has the roll of wire in it that says ESAB on it. You know, so, um, cause usually when you go buy wire from a welding or outfit, they usually, you know, you'll usually get some other air gas cells they don't usually sell you esab wire they'll use it you know they'll sell you something else uh but uh no uh still kind of trying to figure this thing out and get it welding you know every welder is different trying to get her set where where i'm used to or where where i think it ought to be you know let's see if i can get this set up here somewhere Welder turned on, and let's see what we can do here. Okay, we got her tacked. Alright. Uh, 
that away with it. Got her dialed in pretty good. I think the liner though is screwed up in it. The liner, when they had the, when they got the welder, they had the liner all kinked wet when they rolled it up. you want to hold your tip back away with flux cord. I'm used to welding with flux cords. I'm probably holding back too far and my gas is getting in there to clean the weld. Probably most of the problem. Operator error, that's what it is. I'll show you here. I'm just I'm just used to welding with the flux cord too much. I haven't welded with gas in such a long time. In the five years since you know the company I used to work for, that's all we had was MIG welders with uh, gas shielding. But you can see there. Nice bead there. That's where I held it closer to get my gas to, you know, held my tip closer. See if you can see it better on this side. 
Yeah, and look here. See, I just wasn't close enough. I got some porosity in there, which, you know, on this thing here, was just holding a piece of plate up, so. Not too awfully worried about it. Well, let me get my plate set up now and figure out where I'm gonna mount it. Well, guys, we got the engine mounted, bolted down, and I made a plate. And kind of a plate here I made to support the pump and, and the coupler here. Got the Allen heads tightened down on the shaft there. Got my discharge line in. Um, I think we're getting ready here to, I got a plumb of suction now. Got a half inch pipe here. I need, let's see here, I need, hmm, I'm trying to think this through here. That's a swivel. And that one's straight pipe, so. Oh, what are we gonna do here? I'm getting pretty close to firing this thing up and seeing what happens. Guys, got everything plumbed. Let's make sure the gas is on in this. Yeah, there it goes. I had to pour it, it was clear empty on gas. Old Briggs and Stratton. Let's see if this thing will run. Well, I hope the relief valve's working in here and it goes and bypasses back the tank there, I sure hope. Just to double check. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. In. That's suction. Out. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, always makes you nervous. Some deal like this. See if this little thing will even run. And it doesn't really have a, it looks like the throttle's kind of one of those deals where you just, it's set on a governor and it's wide open. Ah, that kind of sucks. It'll kill it. <laughs> but she don't. Let's relieve the pressure so we can start this thing again. It's not as quick as I would like it to be, but it's a lot faster than what it was. I think we can speed the idle up. The fast idle on this motor. Too. Let's get a screwdriver and we'll speed the engine up. if we can get some more RPMs out of that engine, make that pump speed faster. That pump's supposed to rate it RPM. They said on that drive coupler it says 7,600 RPM. So it ought to handle, uh, it ought to handle some revs. Oh man, they got the choke ever bent the shit on it. No, no, don't want to start. up. 
see what happens. All right. Oh shit, I got a choke. <laughs> flooded now. not so great on it I'll tell you that well I can tell you right now they got that mixture screw there packed all the way out golly these guys always screwing with the goddamn carburetors on them Coupler came out. I was wondering why. Why did I lose my hydraulics all of a sudden? Okay, so where'd the coupler go? Why did it come out? Where did it fling that son of a gun to? Hmm. I don't even know where that coupler went. It flung it somewhere. So that screws are tight. Hmm. Well, that sucks. I gotta go find that now. I'll idle it down because it wasn't much fast with it revved up than it was, you know, backed off on the throttle and it's a lot easier on that motor not wound, wound up like that. So let's back this off back where it was and we'll put this coupler back on there. I think he just, you know, we'll see what he says in the morning. I mean, I've I grew up working corrals when I was a kid, and I know that on a head catch, you want to be fast. So it's, you know, we'll see what he says, if he can live with that. It's a lot faster than that other unit up there. That thing was terribly slow. I have to cut my wells on this and try to get my alignment a little bit better on this coupler. Maybe that's... Man, it looks like it's, boy, it just looks like it's dead on, but must be off a little ways. <laughs> Damn it, I'm gonna have to do. How did it come out of there? You just wonder. You'd be shitting me, really? I didn't even think that thing would be able to come out of there.
I'll go ahead and get a hammer and beat this thing back. I was hoping I could just slide one half of the coupler. Okay, good. Okay, good deal. Good deal, good deal. Wow. Damn it. Get a hammer and beat this son of a bitch back. Well, you wouldn't think that thing would be able to come out of there like that. Just amazing that that came out of there. Absolutely amazing. You think it would have just kind of hung up in there and you know slipped a little bit, but it's flung that fucker clear out of there. Get a screwdriver or something to pry that around that shaft. I get myself in all kinds of projects. I don't mind it. Kind of breaks up the monotony doing something like this. You get tired of do something like that 9320 and you're like, man, I'm getting tired of this heavy, heavy lifting and all this kind of stuff, you know. You get in to do a little bit of fabricating or something like that. That stuff's kind of fun. I like doing this kind of stuff anyway. Kind of misshaped it when I when it all got fucked up. I wonder if I can loosen my bolts on my motor and get it lined up a little bit and then tighten them back down or something. I have to try that. one I'd like to start it again and run it to that lower rpm make sure this thing maybe the high rpms just was I don't know wasn't true enough or something and flung the bastard out of there You get a bar and shove in on it while I tighten the allens. Make sure everything's squeezed up real tight on it. <clears throat> oh, seven o'clock at night and I'm ready to go home. But I sure would like to get this thing done. Move on to something else. used to do a whole lot of this kind of stuff when I worked for the driving nurses. We were always building something. I might have too much flexibility in this plate. I might have to put a brace on this plate that I've got here. 
looking at that. Maybe that's shaking too much. We'll try to watch it a little bit when we're when we're running here this time. See what it does. All right, we got her in there again, anyhow. Ugh. Choke's on. Let's go ahead and... sucks it's, it's when you deadhead the cylinder it's too much for it which tells me that we need to back our relief off we probably need to back this relief off that way it's not so aggressive I mean it shouldn't make much difference where is the oil coming from on this plate that's tight and that's tight where the hell is it coming from Everything on here is tight. I don't know where that's coming from. Oh, shoot. Well, we'll come back tomorrow. I'm going to back that relief off. Need to get a gauge on it and put a gauge. I could put a gauge right here in line real easy between this hose and here. It wouldn't be hard at all to do. And see what kind of pressures we're running at. We'll lay that right there, and tomorrow's another day. We're getting closer anyway.